We've all seen this before and there are multiple different ways that we can fix this where a screw has stripped itself out of the glass. Now the different ways that I'm going to show you are going to vary depending on how temporary or how permanent the fix is going to be. But I think it's going to be more beneficial for you that if you know of seven different ways to fix this than if you only know of one different way. So that way if you're in a pinch and you need to get something fixed, you'll have an idea of how to fix it and then when you get home you can make it more permanent. The most obvious way is going to be when you just use a bigger screw. So if I put a bigger screw in here, then it's going to hold a little bit better. Obviously, it will eventually pull out because you're just making the hole bigger. But if you just take a bigger screw and stick it in there, so like right on this one down here, that has already happened. This is already pulled out from there, but someone has used this bigger screw and ran it in there, and that is actually basically you know you can't you can't pull that out so you know that's one way to fix it but it's not really a true fix because what happens is um exactly that you see how this is all bulged out and pulling out it's ripped the gel coat out because you just ran a bigger screw in there so really you need to um, if you do put a bigger screw in there, you need to countersink the hole and we've showed people how to countersink a hole just using the Phillips tip on your bit. You can put it in here and round it out depending on how big the hole is. The next way is going to be to use a machine screw that is slightly bigger because it will do the same thing. If you take this machine screw and you put it in there and you can go by hand, you can kind of go in and out, in and out, in and out with it and you will make threads in the fiberglass using the machine's th machine thread screw and that will be a way to get you more teeth basically onto the fiberglass so i can't pull that out but they are different ways that you can fix this if you notice how many more teeth are on the machine's th machine thread screw compared to the self tapper you're getting like twice the amount of bite as you are with the self tapper so using a machine thread screw will give you more teeth more bite onto whatever you're putting on there now obviously we need to figure out why this pulled out in the first place this in this situation here this is a rod holder that goes here and just like it is over here the problem is that when you put rods in here and you're going through um, the weight of the rod and the tension of the the rod being taller moving back and forth in here as the boat goes through the water it will wear out the where the screws go and the main problem to that is the fact that in here you are in a live well basically there's a hornet right there but you're you've got this outside layer and then this is a live well in here but behind here is nothing but foam So in on the other side of this, we don't have anything but foam back here. There is no access to where that screw is. So the real true permanent fix for this is going to be to dig out all that foam and then put a machine thread screw in there with a washer and a nut on the back. And that is what's going to be a permanent fix. Obviously, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to fix this and use self-tappers because this boat is a 2004 and the self-tappers have lasted for 20 years. So there's no reason why we can't fix it and use a self-tapper. Now there's going to be a lot of you that know about this trick and that is just going to be to use a zip tie. So we are going to take something like a zip tie here. You can take the zip tie you stick it into the hole like that and then when you put the screw in there it is going to create tension against it so when you tighten this thing up it is going to fill the gap so where you can no longer pull this screw out and that's going to go for anything you just cut the zip tie off and it will give you that space um, you can use anything. You can use a stick. You can use a piece of wood. You can use fishing line. It doesn't matter what it is. All you're doing is filling up the space that has been pulled out where the threads are 
with something to give the screw something to bite on. As opposed to like this, I can pull the screw right out. But if I take a zip tie, put that in there, and then I come in here and I tighten this up with that. I can't pull the screw out now. So that is going to be one way that you can fix this. Again, cheap, it's temporary, but it is a way to fix stuff, especially when you don't have access to something. Putting something like a zip tie, a stick, piece of wood in there is going to allow you to fix that. Or at least get a screw to bite and hold what it is that you need it to hold. And those are going to be some temporary fixes or even just a bigger screw it is kind of a permanent fix. But if you want to truly fix it, depending on how bad it is, now we're going to have to use something else. We're going to have to fill this hole up and re-drill it. So let's go and see what we've got in order to fill this hole with. Now in order to fill the hole, we're going to need to take a drill bit and we're going to clean the hole out. Once we drill out the hole, we're going to spray it out with something like contact cleaner to get any kind of dirt, any kind of grease, anything that could be in the hole, any old sealant, we need to get that out of the hole. And then we're going to have different options. We have, you know, five minute adhesive, which is a less permanent. It is less, as, it doesn't have as much strength as an epoxy resin does. So we can either do an epoxy resin, this takes longer, this is quicker. We will need a little cup like this. We will need a straw like this to let air out. And then we will need some fumed silica. So that way we can thicken our resin. And we are going to fill the hole in order to um, re-drill it and then put a new screw in it. So we're going to mix up the epoxy so that way tomorrow we can re-drill it. This takes a day. This you can do in the same day. So this is more flexible. This is more, this is harder and more permanent. So again, depending on your situation, you could also use something like Total Boat. Total Boat has the same type. They have like a four minute one. I don't have any on hand. This is just what I have to show you what we're going to do to fix this. So let me go out there and we will do the fix the hole first, clean the hole out. So then we can come mix it, fill it, and I'll show you how to fill it. depending on where the screw is at and what you're trying to fix will be how pretty you need this to be. But for us, this is gonna be behind the rod holder. So what we needed to do is be able to attach the rod holder to our console here. So what I need to do is just basically take some sandpaper. I'm gonna take my little polisher and I'm gonna grind this down a little bit. So that way it gives it the epoxy something to bite to. Okay, now we are ready to mix up our epoxy. This uh, contact cleaner is going to dry. Again, depending on where you're at, depends on how much strength you're gonna need. If you need a lot more strength, you are going to have to dig this even deeper and actually fill glass on top of this to give it strength. But again, for this type of thing, all we're doing is trying to get the screws to sit again. So let's go mix up our resin and then we'll come and fill these holes with the resin. I'll show you how to fill these holes. So we just need to take our little cup and then these are one to one. So it's one pump and one pump. And then we're gonna add our silica in there. So for this right here, all we need to do is just come over here, get one pump. Then we're gonna get one pump. There we go. And now we can stir this up. And we can add in our silica and this stuff is very bad. So make sure you do not do this. You do not want to, do not want to breathe this stuff in. So be very careful when you're messing with silica. And that is about perfect. For what we need it to be. Notice how it just barely 
barely doesn't even really drip off really thick that's what we want and then we're going to need to get a syringe you can find different ones um, these are what I have at the house um, you can find different ones at tractor supply the dollar store anywhere they're just cheap plastic syringes that you can fill it up and if you've got something small like this we can use our straws to fill it up and if not if you got something bigger like this then you can you know use something else like the straw to fill this thing up um, based on how smaller holes are I don't think that this one's gonna work for me so I'm gonna try and use the small one like this so basically I just take the resin and I'm gonna try and push resin down into our syringe here so just taking their straw putting it right there moving the stuff over trying to push it down obviously a bigger syringe is better but got a really small hole now we can take this and go and squirt it into the hole because um, I don't think this is going to work. I might. This is going to be my backup, but again, this ruins the syringe, so these are the only two I got to try with. Now, if you are on a flat surface, you can mix it up a little runnier, and it will fill up the hole a lot easier than on a vertical surface. But for us, we are on a vertical surface, so we need it to be a little bit thicker. Okay, so now here's our bigger syringe. This one's gonna be a lot easier to do. But what we need to do, I'm gonna stick the straw in the hole because we got a bigger hole. So that way, as I push the syringe in there, it's gonna push air out the back to come out and then I'll pull the straw out as we push the, the epoxy in. Now we can go ahead and take our tape off. Now just make sure that you get any kind of excess epoxy or sealant off of around the area. Um, again, these are these little holes are super hard to do because of that that problem, especially when there is foam behind it because you need to get the air out as you put the epoxy in. But that is how you're going to be able to fill those holes. Now we can come back tomorrow after this dries and we will be able to kind of sand this down a little bit if it bubbles like that one's bubbling a little bit. But we can sand it down a little bit, drill it, and be able to put our screws in there to get our rod holders mounted back to the console.